may be done with planting, but it ain't no time to cool our hills. I mean, now we gotta get caught up on our corn and soybeans. But I tell you what, after the last couple months, I'd kill for a weekend at the lake. But won't be coming anytime soon. So anyway, after the chaos of uh, the last month of planting season, I'm just trying to get things organized, get all of our partial totes and everything combined into one and, uh, you know, get the empty totes where I can give them away. Getting all of our extra return seed, getting it organized so we can send it back. Cause let me tell you, there's a lot of money right there. And we're getting more stuff in almost every day that we're having to pay for. So ain't no sense in keeping that on my, on my bill and having to pay interest on that. So. We getting all of our seed organized, all our chemicals organized. Andy's already gone back to spraying. He's uh, finishing up the last uh, 35 acres of our corn post-emerge that we weren't able to get done before we started planting cotton because last field was uh, too wet. So anyway, he's getting that finished up. We dug uh, our uh, prefix out and uh, all, that's almost completely empty. Uh, got Helena bringing me another one. Uh, we got to turn around and spray our post-emerge application on our full season beans. And then we got to turn around and get started putting some nitrogen on the corn because let me tell you, it's been taking off. It started growing. And is a, and the way we do it, the way, way we stream it on, it starts getting too much size, too many leaves. We run the risk of burning it real bad, you know, potentially setting it back. So we really need to uh, get started putting some nitrogen on. And with uh, severe storms predicted to come in sometime tomorrow, the more acres we can get some nitrogen applied, the better. But first, we gotta get our corn finished spraying, we gotta get our soybeans sprayed, and then we'll get turned back to uh, nitrogen. So we got a lot on the plate for the next couple of days. Maybe we'll be able to take a day off here, here in a little bit. All right, now we got everything sorted out. I got my variable rate nitrogen wrecks for my corn. Got them made a week and a half or so ago, and now I've gotta upload them to the sprayer, but as you can see, here's 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 a map, and anyway, we base our uh, nitrogen wrecks uh, based upon our planting population. You now, where we got real high uh, population, you see, like down here in the uh, red and and stuff. Uh, you know, we we got uh, we got higher population, so we need to put out more nitrogen. But in the lower yielding places, like right here in the green, we got a real low uh, planting population. We're not going to need as uh, near as much nitrogen. But like on this. Uh, on this farm right here, we're gonna be putting out an average rate of 25 gallons of 32% UAN, and it's gonna vary from uh, 14 gallons an acre up to 34 gallons an, an acre. And anyway, that's what Andy's gonna be doing all across the field. Way right over here, here's my RX folder. There's all the list of the prescriptions. Those, those are the shape files we need to send to the sprayer. So first thing I need to do is send that to a zip folder. And then anyway, we got to log into our John Deere Operations Center. There's there's Andy right now. He's uh, uh, spraying there on the home place. Looks like he's got uh, those two fields done. I think he's still got a little bit in this field done. So anyway, we need to wirelessly send the prescriptions. And it's been a year since I've done this. All right, upload files, choose files. All right, and then we're going to select this uh, zipped RX folder. I think that's how we're going to do it. Yep. Successfully sent. So now he ought to get like a screen pop, uh, pop up on his display uh, to accept it. And then it'll upload there to the monitor. And then all we got to do is put our uh, string bars on there, load up with nitrogen, and go to the field. All right, let's check back in on Andy. Yeah, it looks like all he's got is a couple acres right there. One, about two more passes. He'll be done with corn post-emerge. Get 
We're only gonna be able to mix up uh, half a load because that's all the prefix I had left in that tank. Uh, hell, I hadn't quite shown, shown up with my new tank yet, but this ought to keep them running until they show up with my fresh chemicals. All right, Carter, now that you're out of school and you want to learn to drive the water truck, fill up with chemicals and stuff, uh, I'm like, I gotta put, I gotta put you through through a test first. Do you know your units of measure? Mm -hmm. All right, how many, how many ounces are in a gallon? I don't know. 128. This is vitally critical. So you might want to get your phone out and write this stuff down so you can reference it. There's 128 ounces in a gallon. Okay. 32 ounces in a quart. Four quarts in a gallon. Now, th now those are fluid ounces. We also got dry ounces, which is a dry weight, which you may need to know. Do you know how many uh, dry ounces are in a pound? 16. Mm. There's 16 ounces in a pound. Some of the, some of the, some of the chemicals we put out are going to be dry, and you don't need to confuse dry ounces with yeah. fluid ounces. Now, on these uh, bulk tanks right here, I mean, it's very easy. They're... The, the meters are in are in gallons, but when we're measuring out stuff like the infix we're going to use on the on the nitrogen, you know, you're going to have to mix up gallons and ounces and half gallons and every and, and and everything else. So when you're mixing up chemicals, I mean, you have to be exact because not only is this stuff very expensive, if you don't put out the right rate, well, it's not going to be effective, and we just wasted a lot of money for nothing. Or if you mix in too much we're going to be spending a lot of extra money that we don't need because some of this stuff, I mean, is incredibly expensive. So, I mean, if you feel like you're up to it, you need to, uh, when you're measuring out stuff and figuring out what you need, I mean, you've got to be specific and you've got to double check and triple check, make sure you're putting in the right, right amounts of everything. Okay. All right, so we got a new, new tank of prefix on there. So first thing we got to do is we got to calibrate that pump. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We got our calibration jug right here. And uh, right here where this, uh, point, uh, this point is, that's five gallons exactly. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to calibrate that pump to where the meter shows five gallons exactly when that's filled up to five gallons. Anyway, right here on this meter, it shows this guy. It's right now it's set up on a calibration of 10. I think it goes one to 16. And anyway, I believe it the way it works. The thicker the material is, the higher your calibration number, the thinner it is lower your calibration number like roundup is fairly thin so it's gonna have a lower calibration number but this was last calibrated for atrazine which is a lot thicker material so we'd had to have so we had to have a higher one so prefix is gonna be closer to roundup so I'm gonna initially set the calibration I'm gonna hold that button down and I'm gonna press it I'm gonna we're gonna put on put on a calibration of six and see where that gets us well scratch that lesson I just gonna give the uh, Handle here for my chemical tank. I guess the the valve is seized up. It's an older tank. Anyway, it just snapped off. So we got 265 gallons of prefix right there. But anyway, I'm gonna carry it back over to Helena. Let them figure out how to get that tank empty into another one. So we'll just have to hold the uh, teaching lesson till later. I tell you what, it's been a Monday. We had to take our prefix tank back to Helena, and they had a they had a pump that would fit all the way down in there and suck it all out from the old tank into a new one. Of course, it was slow going. Now we are uh, getting Andy loaded up for uh, another batch of soybean post emerge. All right, uh, got him loaded up and off to the races. I got Carter riding with him so Carter can learn how to operate the sprayer, learn how to figure partial loads and everything else. That's what I'm really trying to do this uh, summer is uh, uh, you know, teach Carter a lot of the ins and outs. You know, not just tractor driving, but a lot of the other stuff you need to know here on here on the farm so he can be an even more valuable uh, part of this farm out here. So while they're spraying out that load, I need to get here in the office, <clears throat> get, my, get all my planting and record keeping updated. What the heck? We don't even freaking power? God bless. Now my battery backup on my computer is beeping, so that means that means it's dead. It's been out a while, but showing my battery is at 60%. Uh, maybe that'll be enough to get my record keeping updated. I'm telling you what, it's been a Monday for sure. That should be all they need. 
to uh, get all the soybean spray. So what we're doing, we're emptying the, all the water out of the water truck because we got to fill up with nitrogen. We don't want any uh, water left in there. Otherwise, it'll dilute the nitrogen when we put out the right amount. Whew, I'll tell you what, it is hot out here. I'm already counting down the days to winter time again. Hey, that uh, it looks like it's got it all. Blow all the water out of the line. All right, we just swapped our uh, suction line from our uh, water tank to our nitrogen tanks. had our nitrogen brought in uh, last last week total we got about 11,000 gallons between these two tanks right here and I made, I made another mistake whenever we sprayed our uh, wheat with uh, nitrogen side dress it 32% uh, UAN was running around $300 a ton and I thought about then like it's a pretty reasonable price maybe I need to go ahead and uh, order you know my bulk nitrogen for corn because it's there's a good chance it's going to go up and i got thinking well you know interest rates seven and a half percent do i really want to pay uh seven and a half percent interest on that for two months like i i'll just ride it out anyway when i order this nitrogen they come well the price has gone up a little bit like well how much has it gone up well it's gone up to about four hundred dollars a ton so right at a 25 percent price increase in just a couple months so so as you can see, I, I definitely would have been a lot better if I had uh, went ahead and gotten my corn nitrogen back whenever we uh, emptied those tanks, middle of March, whenever we was uh, spraying our, our nitrogen on our wheat. But anyway, we also got our uh, nitrogen stabilizer, our uh, NBPT inhibitor. Got it loaded on the truck. Even though we're predicting to get rain tomorrow, I think we got like an 80% chance of rain tomorrow. Uh, Y'all remember that mistake I made not having my urea treated with a uh, NBPT inhibitor, uh, you know, the corn planting on uh, almost you know certain chance of rain. Well, we didn't get that rain. Well, there's a chance we're not gonna get that rain tomorrow. So uh, guess what, I'm, I ain't making that mistake again. Yeah, it's gonna cost a little extra. I'm gonna put it in there. That means we're probably gonna get a rain, but I'm not. I'm not running the risk of it. We're gonna, we're gonna add it in there because the last thing we need to do is, uh, you know, apply, you know, average, you know, 25 to 30 uh, gallons per acre of that, miss the rain, and, and then some of that urea in there gas off. So 32% uh, UAN. Uh, that UAN stands for urea ammonium nitrate. So basically, half of it is urea half of it is ammonium nitrate you know we don't have to worry about the ammonium nitrate component of the nitrogen we don't have to worry about it gassing off but the uh, urea part we do so we're going to apply a, you know, a quart per ton of this infix to stabilize the urea part of that uh, uan and let me tell you as, as hot as it is even though the soil is relatively dry now on, on the surface as hot as it is we could lose that nitrogen in a hurry if we didn't add, add that in there all right get this thing uh swapped over for nitrogen you know we're not going to be using our uh, regular tips right here so turn them to a blank spot then we're going to be installing our uh, nita mag uh, stream bars which you know normally we use these on wheat but uh two years ago we actually started using them on corn too now using these stream bars on a big sprayer like this is this the most efficient the best way to apply nitrogen to your corn crop most cost effective way Again, th uh, huge thanks to uh, Bradley Shanklin at Titan Ag LLC. Uh, without them, this test would not be possible. They did provide me this uh, product free of charge to test for myself. And uh, down the hatch she goes.